we're here at Bitcoin London, and I'm speaking to Stefan Thomas of Ripple. And you gave a little talk about um, sort of the the early dark days of, of Bitcoin way back in 2011. Um, and you talked a little bit about a lot of the sort of the mainstream media when reporting on Bitcoin kind of really focuses on their uses in the drug trade and in money laundering. But what are some of the other uses for Bitcoin? So Bitcoin is used for international remittance, I think. It's a big part. Uh, people sending money home to their families if they're uh, immigrants or, or you know, just living abroad uh, for various reasons. Um, so I think that's that's a big part. Uh, also, in the online space, like uh, Bitcoin is really good for making online payments. So anything uh, you pay for websites, subscriptions, you pay for online services, um, for me personally, I, I used to work in the web development industry, uh, so we tend to pay our designers and our designers tend to be offshore. Um, we tend to pay our developers, they tend to be in India, in Pakistan, and it can be really difficult to, to send money to these places. Like for example, Pakistan is no PayPal presence, so uh, they just don't accept it. And uh, you have to go through either Payza or some other you know, payment provider. And Bitcoin is a really attractive option for that, especially if you can start to, to do a lot of your business both on the incoming side and the outgoing side in Bitcoin because you save a lot of fees that way. You told a story about how you ended up losing sort of a large amount of Bitcoin and, and a little bit about the issues about reversibility and, and issues with fraud and Bitcoin. You know, how can sort of this, this market fix those problems? So with the with the loss of bitcoins, I think the way that you would fix it is to give uh, people like banks or or uh, just providers like exchanges uh, a certain type of access to your account, not the master access where they can overrule you, but a sort of backup access where in case you lose your your, your keys, you can still get access to your money ultimately through going through these intermediaries who know your identity and can verify it and then can sign a transaction for you, um, and sort of. That way you have sort of a, a, a fallback, you know, so if you lose your own keys, you can still go back to these uh, institutions. And we're looking to, to implement these types of things for both Bitcoin and Ripple. Um, and it's, it's obviously a long process because you have to get it right. You can't just uh, say, you know, we will give this institution, we'll give this organization my actual key. You have to be a little bit smart about it. You have to have the network enforce uh, when they can actually access your account and when they can't. So banks have a, a, a sort of a place in the, in the future of the Bitcoin economy then, is that what you're saying? Yeah, for sure. I think that reliable financial institutions that are honest with their customers and so on uh, are always going to be needed. Um, and I think the role they're going to play in, in sort of a Bitcoin world is to make it more accessible for people who aren't that technical and maybe don't know uh, how to guard cryptographic keys, who don't know how to deal with all this technology. Um, and they will change in, in, in what they do and the way they operate and they'll become more transparent through it because everything in Bitcoin is, is, is very open, it's very transparent, it's public. Um, and so I think that the, the way the banks work will change, but I think that uh, there will still be a need for financial institutions that provide solid services to people. Can you give us sort of a rundown about what Ripple is and you know sort of how what your place is in this market? Mm -hmm. Uh, so Ripple is a decentralized network. Um, we're still in development. We're currently in closed beta. Um, and what we can do is we can um, facilitate decentralized exchange and facil uh, facilitate decentralized uh, um, transfer of funds that are not cryptocurrency. So for example, you could have dollars, you could have euros, and you could exchange them for cryptocurrency or you could transfer them through a Ripple network. Um, and the way we do this is by having so-called gateways um, where you can deposit funds like gold or dollars or whatever you want and they can issue IOUs on those which can then uh, re be represented as that value in the Ripple network. Um, so by doing that basically we open up uh, sort of the decentralized money space to, to all these other currencies, the other, the other stores of value that people use and want to use. And uh, I think that, that, that way it's sort of a, a, a way to integrate cryptocurrency with the rest of the world. Thank you very much. Thank you.